And so it comes to this moment. In a few minutes from now, there are going to be healings in this room. There are going to be miracles. God is going to move. But the most important thing that you will experience is the ultimate healing of what God does in your soul. Now I want to finish this with a very important story that I've got to tell you. Once in the book of John chapter 4, a woman met Jesus at a well. I told you we we're going to have a threshold conversation. I want you to look me in the eye. The greatest miracle of all is that Christ is going to go right where you're sitting and reveal himself to you. And the Bible says that Jesus asked her for a glass of water. I don't know of a more politically innocent request. There's nothing about it that is offensive. But yet she was offended for the same reason as we were talking about the Samaritans. She said, why are you a Jew having anything to do with the Samaritan? We're going to find out that her anger had nothing to do with race. Nothing to do with race. And today, among the woke, your anger has little or nothing to do with race. Not honestly. It's something deep. So now Jesus says to her, do you realize that if you knew who I was and what I was offering you, you would say you would have asked and received living water. Now watch this, if you will. You know the number one reason you are not an on-fire Christian? The number one reason is you don't know the gift. If you knew the gift, Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift and who it was that offers it to you, you would ask, and receive living water. The dramatic part of it is this. He knew that she would want to be saved if she understood what being saved meant. So now, he says to her, this water right here at this well will leave you thirsty. You'll have to come back. And it's hard work to get the water out. And you will thirst again. The water that I give you will make it so that you don't have to come back here for this water. And you will never thirst again. But you know what? It seems like that doesn't make sense. Because what is he saying? that salvation hydrates your body to the point where you don't ever have to drink water again? No, it's because he knew why she was really there. And he's getting to the bottom of it. That's what we've got to do for you today. We've got to get to the bottom of what's wrong with your life. So he says to her, she says rather, give me this water, and she repeats so that I'll never come back here again or drink this water again. He said, certainly, go and get your husband. First, go get your husband. She goes, I don't have a husband. <laughs> and he said, that's true because you've been married five times and the man you're living with now is not your husband. And her eyes got big and she said, I perceive that you're a prophet putting it very mildly. What's going on here? What's going on here? She wasn't angry at him. She was angry at the fact that she had a spiritual addiction to men. And she met them at the well. And she promised herself each and every time that she humiliated herself that she'd never come back again. But that thirst would come up. You see, and you keep telling yourself, I'm not addicted to cigarettes. I can quit whenever I want. 
I've done it a hundred times. I can control my feelings. I can control my mind. The power of the Christian gospel is simple. It takes the appetites of the devil off of you so that you are free at last. I'm going to say it louder. Free at last. The Bible says, He whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Now, he's telling her, when this water gets in your spirit, no man could ever take advantage of you again. No man will ever find your vulnerable spot in your spirit. No man will ever dominate you again. And you know what? There are people in this room right now, you go to church, you carry a Bible, and you go back to a habit over and over and over and over again. And you promised yourself over and over and over again. I'm not going to hit my wife ever again. I'm not going to look at porn anymore. I'm not going to be alcoholic. I'm not going to have that habit. I'm not going to allow myself to get in a dangerous, sick relationship. And they, you hear them say all the time, why do I always choose a bad woman? Why do I always choose a bad man? Because our spirit separated from God is subject to spirits in this age that make us feel worthless, that make us feel desperate, that make us feel unwanted, unloved, unconnected. Am I preaching yet, by the way? Now, with all that in mind, what does that water do? The Bible says, and we're going to get to this right now, to the town that was demon-possessed, to the city that was given over, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes, with one accord, heeded the things spoken by Philip. Here's the important thing. They heeded this, but when Philip preached, it changed their mind, and they began to heed this. This is why the kind of meeting we're having, the kind of preaching I'm doing, is what L.A. needs right now. I'm going to say it again. It's what L.A. needs right now. We need something that is going to change what they're paying attention to. And finally, it says, For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. You know, isn't it interesting? The occult dazzled them. The occult gave them an experience. The occult was an adventure. Witchcraft was an adventure. But none of it could produce joy. None of it produces happiness. All of it says, in exchange for your loyalty, in exchange for your body, I'm going to give you something that you will sort of enjoy, but not really. And it will end in misery and boredom and depression and suicide. You see, what's going on right now is that people have taken God out of America. They've taken God out. Now watch. When you're on the ocean and the air pressure drops, winds come in to fill that vacuum. And those winds are violent. You cannot take spirit away from Americans and suppose that they're just going to come out of it okay. They're not. That's why we're having a hurricane, a storm of suicide, of depression, of mental illness, of a gratuitous loneliness. All of these emotional problems are caused by a nation that asked God to leave. And when God left, demons came in. But you know what? Those demons are on their way out. 